I'm John DeArmond with the Kokia Valley Sword Group, and today we're talking about the second article in the Heiho Sancho Kasho. So let's go ahead and dive in. <clears throat> article 2 How the Way of Strategy Should Be Understood. The strategic principles should, in battles and single combat, always be viewed as identical. In the following, I write about the strategy of single combat, but if we compare the spirit with the general, the arms and legs with the vassals and knights, the torso with the infantry and inhabitants, the control over the country with that of our own body. It is understandable that in the way of strategy there is absolutely no difference between either. When fighting, one should pay equal attention to the entire body from head to toe, namely, not too much and not too little, not too strongly and not too weakly, so that no imbalance develops in the body. So, in this article, uh, Masashi's laying out one of the core principles for Kyoho, this idea that the microcosm mimics the macrocosm, that the strategy that we apply on small-scale conflict applies to large-scale conflict. Um, what's nice is that he goes in and gives us very specific examples that way uh, we're sort of guided in the direction to start to think about it, um, so it's not quite so... Uh, kind of ephemeral, like, oh, it's all the same, right? It, but rather, he gives us concrete examples. Um, so let's look at those examples individually, right? The first is the spirit and the general. Now, um, for practitioners who are not familiar with sort of um, Asian martial arts, uh, this idea of spirit can sound like uh, some sort of supernatural thing, like a uh, uh, magic energy, right? And while there are certainly um, groups, even within uh, Japanese martial arts, that view it that way, um, especially uh, arts that have a heavy Shinto influence, that is not what Misashi is, is talking about here. Um, when he says spirit, he means uh, the same kind of thing that we would say, like, oh man, you know, that, that uh, basketball guy, is, he's really getting it today, right? He's just, he's, he's got the fight in him. Um, it's that same sort of thing. It's um, a combination of attitude and resolve and composure, you know, sort of several um, psychological facets that this person embodies or exudes for that time. Um, so what does that mean? For us in Yo, we apply our spirit in, in lots of ways, but principle, the, the, the sort of principle way that we apply it is a sort of body of a rock, right? Which is to say, resolutely, right? When something has to be done, you do it, right? And that kind of steadfastness, you can see how, how we manage ourselves and our composure in that respect would translate directly over to how... Uh, the general of the army would need to function, right? Both in uh, their bearing in order to properly affect their troops' morale, but also in the way in which they deploy their troops um, so as to not be mushy, right? Um, hey, I'll talk a little bit more about this. So let's say that you have an inexperienced commander and you know a hypothetical situation you're you're in a walled city you're being besieged and your your commander of the watch or your, your troop commander or whatever you know he doesn't have he's kind of green he goes hey you know we're being pinned down i don't really know what to do maybe what we should do is just sit here and and just launch arrows at him right play the the siege city card right um but, oh no, they're, they're going off and doing this, so maybe I should change my plan to try and go out and, and meet them out on the field, or 
you know, this, this sort of inability to assess your strengths and weaknesses, to assess your enemy's strengths and weaknesses, to observe the kind of natural order of the encounter and the environment that you're in uh, can lead people, stop, thank you, that's my dog, uh, to making choices that are, are ineffective and that they kind of flip back and forth on. And this, of course, if you're the guy on the ground going, oh, I gotta go do this, we're doing this thing, we're doing this thing, you know, you have a sense of, of whether it's working or not, right? Um, and if you're doing something that's getting good results and suddenly you get pulled away from that, your morale, you know, it takes a hit. And if the disposition of your troops drops, their efficacy drops, right? Um, think about that. Because uh, we always tend to think about this type of idea in Koho, or at least people I've talked to. Because everyone, pretty much everyone's read the Book of Five Rings, the Go to No Show. And so everyone kind of has opinions on it. Right, and so they'll they'll have this notion that it always they'll they'll think about it going one way, right? Because the single combat's what's explained, and so they go, okay, well then I'm extrapolating large scale combat. And it's like, well that's true, but it goes both ways, and so once you understand why you would do things in the way that we're doing them, you can bring it back to single combat too, and go, oh. If my spirit is indecisive, my troops, my my knights, my infantry, you know, my cavalry, they're not going to move in a coordinated fashion. They're not going to move effectively, right? And when you see that and can kind of like, oh, look at the idea here, look at the idea here, and then bring it back, and then you sort of keep bouncing it back, uh, your understanding of what at least in Musashi's eyes, real strategy is, um, becomes apparent. Um, in that it's, it's not about memorizing tactics. I mean, tactics are good to understand uh, on a fundamental level, like to understand the mechanisms by which they operate and achieve their efficacy, as opposed to uh, well, I know that if I run my columns specifically this way, it has this impact on the field, but I don't know why, right? That would be sort of a weak strategy in our opinion. Um, so, moving on. Right? The arms and the legs being as vassals and knights, right? Well, well vassals and knights, what are those? Those are not the rank-and-file infantry. You can think of these as sort of the the special units, right? They're, they're, they're the people that uh, have the harder jobs because they tend to produce a greater result, right? They can be leveraged a smaller force against a larger force, um, you know, to better effect. So what are those? Those are our legs and arms, right? So how do we use our legs and arms in Yoho, right? How do we move with them? Right? When we go to cut, you know, what moves first? Right? Is it, is it body and the arms together? Well, no. Right? We, we, this is uh, definitely not a thing we do. Instead, right, we'll have our body move into position and arms attack. Right? Our legs lead the way. Whew, carry the body in. Boom! Arms attack. Right? When you start to think about it in this fashion, and, and really just take his words as being literal and descriptive and not, uh, not open and suggestive and sort of whatever you want them to be, then it becomes really, really clear, right? So the torso as the infantry and the inhabitants. Now, it's interesting that he, he mixes infantry and inhabitants here, right? Um, why do we move our body, right, in fighting? We move our legs to get into range or to get into specific position, right? But why do we move our body? Is it just dragged along as it has to be? 
right? Now, we move our body to one, protect ourselves. If some guy's cutting at us, we gotta move it out of the way, right? Well, when an army's coming in, what are they doing, right? They are attacking the country, right? They are attacking the populace. They are trying to come in and take out everything that makes this work so that they can take it over. It's, it's the same, right? If I come up to a dude and I need to work, I break him down, right? I break down his ability to function, to operate in his self-contained system, in his country, right? This is the same way. Uh, what's interesting about this uh, is that in the same way that we move our bodies to protect ourselves, that movement of that large force of our body powers our work. It supports our work, right? We, we could have the most awesome war arms in the world. We might be great, big, beefy, cutting madmen, but if our posture starts to break, if our if this force that powers us and the force that supports these sort of long, extended, vulnerable bits of us that are working break apart, then our work breaks apart and we're taken apart easily, regardless of the strength of our individual units. You see? Right? It's, 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 it's actually really, really clear, really, really simple. I don't know why like, a lot of people have so much trouble with this. Um, and remember, right? You have your army, right? And you got to move the populace anyway to protect them. But from the populace, you can draw foot soldiers. You can draw conscripts. Now, they're not always the best, but it is, it is an additional bulwark to your force. So um, it's useful to think of your body in a, in a full and well-rounded way. Of course, we want to protect it first and foremost, but understand that it is powerful and that if we just neglect it or if we think, oh, we're trying to, you know, here's our body, here's the attack, and we want to just move the body away from it so that it's safe, yeah, that's great, but you've also prevented our ability to break down the enemy attack, to break down the enemy command, right? So, you know, you gotta get the whole picture, okay? And so, a last uh, bit, control over the country as control of the whole body, right? And we, we talked about this already. I think we've, we've kind of covered it enough, um, except to say that this gives us a really good idea of what, in Musashi's mind, made a good leader, right? It's not necessarily someone that has... Uh, memorized every possible tactic or, or anything like that. Instead, it is a person who can skillfully manage the entire unit, right? In the same way, uh, when he talks about fencers, you know, it is, oh, well, you know, there are some fencers that focus on, on feats of dexterity or, or quickness or strength but that these are weak in his opinion. It's the same thing, you know. You might be able, you might be, you know, like Napoleon, brilliant, brilliant tactician, and you know artillery, right? And you know how to deploy that artillery to maximum effect. If you don't understand things like logistics and supply lines so much, you end up in the middle of Russia in the winter, and, and life's rough for you, regardless of all of the advantage you had, right? So, uh, beyond being something that's just useful to know and, and kind of fun to think about, sort of just ponder, we can use this as a blueprint in our own work. If our goal is to become uh, good swordsmen or, or to do the work of strategists that uh, Musashi would approve of, right? We need this sort of holistic, whole body approach, right? We can't be, oh, well, I've got really good legwork, but that's it. Or, you know, my 
my taitsumaki, my, my body motion is very excellent, but I can't, my, my hasuji is awful, I can't cut well, right? It's not good enough, right? Find your deficiencies, hunt them ruthlessly, and improve them, right? You've got all the time in the world as long as you choose to actually spend your time on it, right? Remember, you got to train. Um, so, you know, that first part of this, this article is big, it's huge, it's got a lot of information. But if, let's say, we don't have a taste for large-scale strategy, we don't, we don't care about it, you know, we're, we're not fighting military campaigns in the 15th or 16th century, it's, it's not an issue that we have to think about, this second section uh, provides us a lot of information uh, as it relates to our individual fencing, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it again and let you kind of cogitate on it, right? When fighting, one should pay equal attention to the entire body from head to toe, right? Not too much and not too little, not too strong and not too weak so that no imbalance develops in the body. Think about that, right? Um, Shoho, we, we use sime a lot. We apply a lot of pressure to the opponent, but... That does not mean that we're sitting here like, <laughs> you know, and, and, and doing this sort of like coarse outward pressure. Not that that work is bad, right? But it's imbalanced, right? It's, it's or at least it appears imbalanced on the outside. It depends on your, your st cool style method, all that. But for the example, right? Just roll with it. This, this outward, all aggression, all aggression, all aggression is imbalanced. It's too strong. It's too much of one thing. And it creates weaknesses and deficiencies other places in our work. It makes us more vulnerable the more imbalanced we become. So the, uh, time to pick on other martial arts. No, <laughs> this is not a picking. It's, it's just, they're constructive examples, right? So in a lot of reality-based martial arts, they have uh, come to the conclusion that traditional martial arts don't work because there's not that level of, of realistic aggression, right? And just that, that, just drive at them, claw them in the face, kick them in the balls, punch them, break them, you know, and really just, ah, 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 right? And, uh, and they've come to this conclusion kind of rightly. I mean, if you if you walk into any strip mall in America and go to whatever flavor McDojo they have there, and you watch their work, it's empty, right? Um, on the inside, their their bodies are empty. They're they're going through the motions. They may even be going through the motions uh, with you know really using a lot of tension in their muscles, right? But it's it's hollow. It's Unfortunately, this is one of those things that's kind of hard to talk about until you've experienced it yourself and you've watched it and you, you've felt it in your own body and then been able to see it in somebody else. This sort of empty fragility. I mean, even when, you know, people are, whoa, blah, 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 right? They can still have it. At the same time, you, you could be like a frail little old person and still have fullness in your form. You know, that solidity, uh, that body of the rock, right? <laughs> um, anyway, back to the, the example. Yeah, so they're, they're empty, right? And they go, oh, well, they're empty because they don't deal with, uh, they, they've removed resistance from their training. They may have like sportive elements of, of sort of touch sparring, but there's nobody going, okay, you know, this technique that we're studying is this shoulder lock. You're going to try and do this shoulder lock. I'm going to try and make sure that doesn't happen, right? Because I'm going to try and keep working on you. I'm going to, I'm going to frustrate your work. I'm going to break your posture. I'm going to create pain. I'm going to create fear. I'm going to create inconvenient body positions. Can you still do the work, right? Um, the problem is that the reality bell self-defense guy, and again, this is a generalization. You know, it's. It's never everyone's like this. And the difference between strong practitioners and weak practitioners is almost always in how they practice, right? So it's 
it's not that I'm trying to pick on their method. Um, because that's, I think that they have a lot of things to bring to the table. Um, the same thing with the sort of McDojos, right? Just despite my derivative uh, comment on it. Um, how you train determines your quality as, as a practitioner, of course. Um, and training too light and empty, right? You break apart. Training too hard, too, too much. Uh, not in the amount you train, but in how you train too coarsely, too hard. Uh, it creates that same kind of weakness, right? And it's, it's just a little harder to see. It's harder to point out, right? Um, balanced, right? Now, everybody's, pretty much everybody, I imagine, has heard the sort of romanticized idea that Musashi was this, this unshaven vagabond, he didn't take baths, blah, 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 and all the other sort of hype and, and stuff that's built up around him, uh, you know, due to the Musashi industry, right? Because there's money to be made in Musashi as a historical figure. And, uh, you know, the Japanese are no fools. They're capitalizing on it, as they always have. Um, and Americans, too, right? How many, how many Musashi karate schools they even come across? It's just crazy. But from the historical accounts that we have, the verifiable ones, of Musashi's duels that specifically describe his continence, he's not, other than his, his early duels, uh, he, he's not described as this, like, wild maniac, right? In fact, um, one of his adopted sons, I don't think it was Yori, uh, made an account, and he said that Musashi was serene, right? Now think about that word, serene, right? There's, there's, a, there's a powerful kind of word, you know, it denotes a, a calmness and a confidence. Uh, you know, to my mind, at least, it, it denotes kind of a, a lack of excess, right? Just enough, just enough, right? And if you think about that, and sort of match that image with your work and go, is my work serene, right? Would would somebody look at my my sasen or, or my kisakiyashi type cut and say that that is serene, right? And I don't think so, right? So it it's a, it's a good article, right? It very clearly defines what we mean when we say that strategy is universally applicable, right? And it gives us a really good benchmark and um, metric, an, an overall measuring system to look at our own work and break it down and go, okay, you know, maybe maybe I'm sitting here and I'm doing, doing it, right, over and over and over and over and over again. And I start to notice that all I'm thinking about while I do my saw sin is getting into that Koshimi Hami position, right? Getting those hips snapped in, getting that low hip position. And then I realize, oh, well, maybe my shoulder's up, right? Maybe my arm's out. Maybe the form is perfect, but it's not right, right? It's, it's empty. It's got that hollow weakness. Or maybe it's overly strong, and I start to feel that, that, that pull from working against myself. Or maybe my physical form, boom, dead on. And I am just this, this technical, just perfection, right? But my spirit's not right, right? I've put no emphasis on it, right? So it's, it gives us a lot to think about. Um, now, something that you can do to kind of uh, benefit even more from this is Musashi's laid out how these parts of the body directly correspond to these uh, military facets. Go through the Govern No Show and read every place he talks about the arms, right? Think about samurai. Think about K1. 
cavalry, right? Every time he talks about the spirit, think about the general of an army, right? And uh, you'll, you'll, if you're attentive, you'll get a lot of insight, right? Because there's a lot of stuff that is, it's in plain sight. It's not even hidden. It's just, it is literally like right there, pasted on the window, and everybody misses it, right? So, as always, if you want to understand this, you got to pick up a sword and go train. Thank mm-hmm. you.